Welcome to Tell the Damn Story, the show that explores the many ways to navigate the successes and failures that aspiring and struggling writers face to make your journey that much easier. Hey, Alex Simmons, what's going on? How you doing? We are already somehow late in July, Alex Yeah. Simmons. Wow. How's that working out for you? Well, oddly enough, I'm not sure because the summer was like coming and then suddenly we're already halfway through it. Zip, baby. I'm trying to figure out what happened because I don't feel like I've done a ton of stuff, but I don't feel like I've been drifting either. So I don't know, I'm losing a sense of, of real time. I don't know. What would you call it? Proper use of time, proper awareness of time. I'm not sure what you would call it. You know, I'm Something getting time. done. Yeah. Well, the world is moving fast and there's plot twists <laughs> everywhere <laughs> and new developments. Yep. yep. Just makes you go, what? <laughs> we're, we're doing what? Yeah, I'm not, sure, kinda, go ahead. I'm not sure who's writing the script for this one, but I feel sometimes I feel like I'm caught in one of those 1940 serials. You know, with a cliffhanger at, at yeah. every 15 minutes. Well, and it's it's not one of those good serials. It's one of those cheap ones where <laughs> you see the car go off the cliff at yep. the end of last week's. They all are dead because that car exploded. That's and right. Then, then then we come to this week and they're like, wait, no, this is actually what happened. And you're like, that's a cheap. That ain't real. No, you That's... want to know what's even a worse cheat than they like them not showing them dive out of the car at the last possible second. The, yeah. the worst cheat, and it was actually done in a 1949 serial time machine, is <laughs> I, they, they didn't know how to get them out of it. So the, the following week, after escaping from the blah blah blah, you know, and that's it. They just they yep, got, and that that you just that see them. Okay, what's go. going on here? Yeah, yeah it's sad. And, it's sad. And you gotta look, you gotta look at the good news wherever you can. This morning I got up. We are recording this on Sunday. We're gonna release this like a shotgun right out yep. of yep. <laughs> right. Once we record, it's going up. But last night, one of our semi-regulars here on Tell the Damn Story. Oh, yes. The one and only Rebecca Cuthbert. She won an Imagine Award. I think it's called. Imagine, yeah. Yeah. Um, for her book of poetry, In Memory of Exoskeletons, which I was honored to give a blurb to. So I was just like, yay. And it's a pretty, it's a really, it's like a little genie lamp on top of books, all brass or gold or whatever. Where can you get very, that? Very, very cool. Where can you get the book? You can get that on Amazon. Oh, Probably Amazon. get that on Barnes Noble. I know, it's, I know it's on the zone. I know that. Okay. Um, well, then, it's, folks, it's there you As a matter of fact, in the upcoming Soul Scream and Thalzine Annihilation, I asked it to reprint one of the one of the poems from there because it fit the theme so well. So now I feel timely. It's an accidental timely, but yeah, it, it just shows how perceptive you are. That's all. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you yeah. go. There you go. All right, <laughs> let's talk to people about what we're going to talk to people yeah, about what yeah. we're going to talk to this, people this about episode. today. Yes. <laughs> yep. yes. And this is a, the um, one that Chris came up with, which is apro actually apropos because A, AI is not going anywhere. B, it is controversial in a lot of ways, especially to creatives who are concerned about how it could usurp their various jobs and things in the industry uh, but at the same time it's also it has potential ability to be an assistant and it's an application that could actually be possibly be very useful and so one of the things we wanted to talk about as chris presented it is can it be really well utilized in the marketing realm is that it was, was right. that we got as we have to establish or re reestablish in case anyone is doubting we stand with the majority the vast majority of creatives who refuse to use ai to write or to draw illustrate paint even oh, record, like, yeah. whatever you're doing, whether it's a poem or a short story or a novel, there are those few who are cranking them out with AI and people can tell and 
that's not the reason we don't want to use it. It's because it's not our own words. It's not our own drawing. It's not our own painting, whatever. Art should come from us. And then I got thrown a real curveball this week on social media. Two different ads came up that talked about using AI for marketing. And it was pretty funny. One of the ads said, we know that writers and creatives are great at that. And most of them complain about marketing. Let us handle it with AI. <laughs> and my first knee jerk was like, oh, no, AI, no. And then I was like, wait a second. <laughs> what is the morality of using AI to market? It's just going to find in whatever AI way it does, people who would be most interested in your product. Is that morally acceptable? AI is used in business everywhere. Why would it not be right for us, the creatives? And that's what I wanted to hear about from Alex Simmons today and from all of you out there. Yes. All the millions and millions who are watching us now, we want your comments. We want your feedback. Is it morally acceptable or professionally acceptable or ethically acceptable for creatives who are totally against AI in their creative endeavors? Is it acceptable to use AI to market their work? So we here, go here, to the professor. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what, one of the ways that I look at this is, and you present it rather well, is the first. Well, thank thing, you. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you for very much. much. That's an A for you. Yes. Is that in writing. Now I just story, need the I. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, geez. In writing a story, writing a bit of fiction or even nonfiction, but you're writing, you're, you're telling your story, however it fits in the genre. And these words theoretically should be yours. You're, you want to bring it from your heart, mind, and so forth. So ultimately, to use AI to write it, not only is it not your words per se, but you don't know whose words the AI has borrowed from what source materials it's pulled from for its particular knowledge in this particular realm. So that's an intrusion. And that's in some ways it, it's, it borders on plagiarism in ways that I'm uncomfortable with. On the other hand, to talk about other ways of using AI and whether or not it fits in marketing. For instance, for our show, when we finish what we've done with an episode, I drop it into an editing software that uses AI to transcribe. So it's taking our spoken words and putting it into a written form. That's right. Oh, yeah. oh it's our own work. We're just yes, organizing yes. our own work. Yes, okay. it's typing a script based on everything that is said in the episode. So it's our not words. It's not rewriting it better. No. Because how could it? Yeah. <laughs> right. Anyway, so there's that. Then there's another software that I put it in so that it can come up with suggestions for titles. Chris comes up with titles. This software comes up with title suggestions. And I might look at the suggestions and go, oh, that's a good one. Or I'm going to go, nah. Or I can maybe take a bit from one or two and piece that together. So title you treat AI just like you treat my titles. <laughs> exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like that. There are ways. Uh, oh, and also it will some this particular software will also, again, based on the copy within the episode, our spoken words and any titles and things that we've mentioned within the episode, it'll pull out and identify keywords. So, again, it's pulling from our source material. And then sometimes I don't, people say hashtags are valuable or not valuable. But either way, I get a collection of those things. So in, in circumstances like that, I find immediately it's like having an assistant. It's like having an intern or someone who I can bounce stuff off of or who makes suggestions. So working from our material, our source material, and then getting these little tune-ups on it, that I find comfortable. 
marketing is maybe one step further in terms of how you use AI. If you're, you and I write copy for our various books and mm. projects and appearances, and more often than not, that's what I still do. I can't say that I've had a lot of experience asking AI to write promos for me. But again, some of these softwares that I'm using give you that option. They will create or generate some sort of copy based on it, whether or not I use it or not, it's, that's up to me. And much of the time, like you said, I can. there's something in the, the verbiage, or the structure of the sentences that just feels that's not me or that's not us. It's not how we would say it. So then I don't use it. So I think, again, it's about determining how far into the forest you want to go. You know, how far into the forest. So one of these advertisements says, I let AI run ads on Facebook and Instagram, and I start making sales. And it went from 20 orders to 268 orders. That's nice for them. New customers every time. And I'm thinking, the first thought is, if that's even partially true, more sales are more sales. And that's a strictly business side decision. It's not a creative side decision. I, I really do struggle with whether it is professionally acceptable because I can't get myself to, for example, subscribe to so-and-so's book review app. We will get you, I don't, whether I don't believe it or I don't feel good about it or I don't feel it's honest, it's a combination of all those things. I can't do it. Hmm. Do I apply the same morality to trying to generate ads? I went on Amazon ads for our Seamus Nunzio books, including the Soul Scream and Thalazine, and the book we did with Rebecca to bring her back, which was Creep This Way, really? How to Become a Horror Writer. Mm -hmm. And particularly with her book, the Amazon ad has been very effective and has garnered sales every month. And I got to tell you, I don't know what or how they're doing it. I follow the directions and it has worked, especially for that book. Would this be about the same thing. I don't know how AI works. I know I mean, it's... Don't you have... what? What's the mindset? If we weren't talking computers, you would either hire a promotions company or individual, a sales department or marketing right. department, or a copywriter. This is These are those options. So it's a matter of can you even... Not you, but in general, or can a person afford to hire any of those particular services that would be run by humans, assuming well, that those I humans would, are actually doing the work and not then turning to AI to do it for them. That's that's interesting. And we'll separate that part for a second. It, it comes to me that if we're thinking about we would hire a marketing department or we would hire a marketing person, then am I taking a job away from that person? The other end of that is I can't afford a marketing person now. But we were hearing that same argument with people saying there's a problem if you use AI to generate art for your book covers because you're taking away work from artists. Are we taking away work from marketers is there a moral tangle there? Or is it, listen, independent publishers are more or less a one-man band or one-woman band or one-them band, whichever way you want to go. 
this is an app that will help with that. I, it's really weird because you could make that same argument saying that you're a one-man band using AI to write your stories is helping you or to do all covers is helping you yeah. but we have clearly drawn a line on that well I right think, yeah, and that's I, not creative yeah so do we use the same line for the business end but that that is you you just said that you just said the reality of it and w which is what's the call that the business head has to make from a creative standpoint as creatives and as business people, we see certain lines we do not want to cross. At the same time, if we're going to be business people, then we have to be very honest. And I'm saying this about everybody out there who's an entrepreneur and struggling to build their universe. You have to decide where your lines in the sand are drawn. And if you cannot afford to hire a marketing person or copywriters or that sort of thing, if you cannot, if you're not that good at, at writing marketing copy and doing the sales ads and things like that, then you are actually asking yourself, do I continue to dog paddle in the middle of the lake until I drown? Or do I grab for this floating driftwood or this rowboat or this right. paddle or something to save my life, well, to save my business? And one of the things that the AI, AI says is that it has powerful computers that will select the keywords for you, which I, I've been getting better at, but I'm not great at mm -hmm. or even good at yet. And they would find the best places, best times, best audience for your books. That sounds like a dream. That's research. That's, but the thing I'm struggling with. And this is this is the kind of thinking that may prevent me from ever being a good businessman. <laughs> is that is it the same thing? Uh, excuse me, Isabella wants to come up. Oh, okay. Hey, Izzy. All right, Isabella. How you yes, be, Isabella? She look. Uh, we are we're in intense situation with uh, Silvio, son of Steve, uh, Seamus and Enzio's managing editor, who has been very sick. So oh. she's been a little more kind of, I want to be near you. What's going on with that guy? And we're fingers gotcha. crossed. Tune in next week and we'll let you know yeah. what he's doing. Yeah. But the moral quandary, back to the moral quandary. So what I'm asking you and what I'm asking the audience out there is if as an artist, I and I did change the cover of Soul Scream and Thalazine, Come All Ye Faithless, Mm -hmm. Once I realized that the that app was the I was book. using, it was the very first book. Yeah. And we had a really cool kind of goblin on a tree looking menacing. But it was an app. And then I went back once AI became a really hot topic and looked. And yes, that app was using AI. So I couldn't morally, even though I hit the buttons, I couldn't morally say that was acceptable. So I took that cover off and paid Matt Wilderson to, I sent him some pictures and I said, can you make this look like something? He says, I'll make it look like a reflection in a Christmas ball on a Christmas tree. I said, yes, sir. And I paid him because he's an artist and he can do those things. And I can live with that morally. I can live with writing and rewriting and editing and peer editing. I can live with that morally. So what can I live with on the business end? Because the business end has a different brain. The business end says, what's going to get you the most sales? But there's a whole section of the business end of the community that I morally reject because they just say, hell with people, let's screw people as long as we get enough money for the second house or the th third boat or whatever that's not what i'm trying to do i'm yeah. trying to sell my book to a few people but am i morally rationalizing or am i making a fuss over nothing okay so i can't say that you are making a fuss over nothing because you are wrestling with your conscience and that is never a nothing that is never a nothing 
no matter what we may hear and see in the media these days, certain communities of people, no matter where they be, have ethical questions that they must wrestle with, that we must wrestle with. I'm all for that. And I think the more we stop doing that, the more pathetic our society becomes. Yes, if you use AI to do some of these things we're talking about, yes, a human being could do that. And that means if you use AI instead of this human being, you have not hired this human being. Yes, that is the answer to that question. The other side of that question is, if you do not use the AI, would you have hired this human being? And if your finances, right. you could not, then you are left with, okay, I must fumble and stumble through this to try and make this work myself. If you're okay with that, if you're okay with continuing to struggle uphill with the boulder until you make it, Fine. That's a legitimate decision. If you decide, no, I have a finite amount of time to try and make this work. I have a finite amount of finances to support the company. I have people who I have hired to write these books who are depending on me to be successful with this. So I have to make some hard calls. That's also legitimate. And then it becomes, what are the hard calls that you're going to make? Yeah. How do you live with that? Because the other side of that moral question is this ongoing project, which Seamus Anunzio, who puts out Rebecca's book, who mm -hmm. puts out Soul Scream and my own novels. Mm -hmm. It has to prove cost effective. Mm -hmm. Right now, my output, my expenditures continue to be more than my intake. Now, I keep sections separate because Rebecca deserves some royalties, so she gets royalties, but I'm not making a, a significant profit on my own, right, with my own marketing. So this becomes a question of are we going to? My man just came back from the spa, so he's going to need some rubbing. Uh, yeah, my dog has a better life than me. Thank you, brother. I wish your godson went to pick him up. Hey, hey. Um, he's already gone. He's got things to do. He's got to go to the gym. So a nice shot of him and his lady gobbling down some food at a, an event yesterday. Yes, they went to a concert the other day yeah. and uh, they had sandwiches. They had yes, sandwiches. They did. So, <clears throat> there's your moral there's your secondary level of moral questions if it becomes a thing of you can make this a ongoing worthwhile business investment or you have to continue working at a loss that tilts the scale in the other direction yeah. but does it morally justify I, I don't I, I think you keep using the word morally and I don't know if it's moral or it's business ethics. And I think business ethics are at some okay. that are different from life ethics. I don't know that they should be, but I think they're sometimes looked at that way. So My, what would be the business ethic? The business ethics is that you are in the business of making a business. You are building a business that has X number of people to take care of. Literally, that's it. The responsibility is to you, your family, and the writers who've come on board. Your responsibility is to not only put in the quality to create the material that they've contributed to, but then to get it out there in a quality packaging, and then to promote it proficiently so that the sales can be built up so that everyone is then perpetuated forward, both financially, both from reputation standpoints, the material gets out there and entertains or informs. And so the community, the larger community benefits from it. And Seamus and Nunzio Productions or Publishing House continues to either be able to sustain itself on a comfortable level or to grow. From a business standpoint, that's your job. You, this is not a hobby. This is a business. If it was a right. hobby, that would mean to me anyway that you have oodles and oodles of cash to blow on this and have <laughs> a great time. Have a great time. Yeah, that's not the situation. Either. And let me, also, <laughs> let me also just call us out here, us being both of us. 
We are, and folks, this is going to sound like I'm patting myself and Chris on the back, and I am for a moment because we're entitled. We are conscientious people. We are ethical people to as far as one can throw a good stone. We are caring individuals. We are creative individuals. We're reasonably talented, if not really talented people. We are not really good at promoting. We, we, we are not really efficient and great at promoting. We have a show that's got 321 episodes in existence, and not a lot of people- and not 321 dedicated fans. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. We have both struggled with promoting our books. We have both struggled with promoting our appearances at places. So there's a reality. We are deficient in a particular skill set. Now, should I feel like, oh God, well, I, I serve no purpose in life because I'm not really great at marketing? No, that's not my strong suit. That's not where I excel. And I've said since my acting days years ago that artists and creatives should find business administrators and financiers or financial wizards as passionate and as talented at what they do as what we do so that we can all rise together. So that business gets taken care of with the same amount of effort as the art. And quite often that's not what happens. So I personally think that where the line is drawn, no, I'm not gonna use AI to, to draw artwork for me. I, I can't do that in my head. And I have friends who are artists who are saying, go for it, I can't. Maybe one day I'll change my mind, I don't know, but it's not happening at the moment. I don't wanna use AI to write any books for me. I can't do that either. Again, I wanna have more control over the material. I have my own amount of knowledge, but also I don't know where it's pulling that stuff from. And I don't wanna feel like it's ripping somebody off and stuffing it into my book and I'm plagiarizing like a mad monkey. No, thank you. Right. But I will no use- No mad AI. monkeys. Right, no mad monkeys here. But I will use AI as a virtual assistant. I will use mm -hmm. it to help me break down sometimes the structure of something based on the material that I already have. I'll give you a quick, for instance, and again, this is talking business finances. One of the things I have the most trouble, and I'm boy, folks, we're being really transparent here. One of the things I have the most trouble doing is setting a price, a real price for my work, for my efforts, mm -hmm. whatever I do. I struggle with that. I used to say I have this Lone Ranger syndrome. I want to do a good deed and ride off in the sunset and the heck with being thanked. Bull. <laughs> That's, that doesn't work for keeping a roof over your head. So I went to, I used an A program and had it look at the, the a series of courses that I'm putting together. It took the material that would go into that course. It looked at, oh, there was a couple of other uh, prompts, variables, but it took the material that I was going to do in that program, in that course. It looked at what I would have to add to increase the value of the course if I did an A, B, or C. And then it went through the marketplace, because it has the reaches out there, and came back to me with price value for each one of those stages. Right. And I breathe a huge sigh of relief because I suck at that. So that was great. I said, oh, so this is a range. This is a range. This is a range. Okay, I can live with that. And this one isn't too far off of the, month, the, the amount that I was thinking about. So to use it to, for things like that, for research and things like that, but even when you use it for research, you still got to check because you just yeah. don't know. So in some ways, again, it's like working with a, a virtual assistant or an intern. You just have to decide again, and we've said this several times in the episode, what's the line you do not want to cross? Where do you stop yourself? And I am absolutely adamantly against using it to write books and throw them out there, whether they're nonfiction, novels, or children's books. I, if you can't put together a 22-page coloring book with a couple of lines under each illustration, really, you know, what's the point? <laughs> really, that's sad. That's truly sad. A is for what? Apple. Yeah, okay. Something that's simple. But there are people who are going, oh, this is easy. Boom, boom. And then they're throwing it out there. Okay, that's what they're doing. And as you've said in the past, more power to them. Go for it. But that's not what I feel comfortable doing. It's not what. Yeah, you... no, I don't want to. I don't want to give them the more power to them. I dis. 
I disagree with that. Mm -hmm. I know that it is technically not legal, but they won't find me online to buy their same their here products. Yeah. Same here. At least knowingly, it won't happen. There we go. I do feel like I have a little more ammunition. I would really love to hear what people who watch the show, what they think about it. Mm. AI marketing. Is it a good business move or is it the devil's underwear? Let us know. <laughs> Wait a minute. I just need to understand as a qualifier, does he change his underwear? or No, he does not. Hair? No, they do not. Because the oh. devil could be anything. Yeah, that's right. Oh, so they do not. It could be okay. anybody. We don't want to. We don't want to leave out any of the devils. They come in here all mad at us. But yeah, oh, we don't want to know, especially in their underwear. No, oh god. Okay, <laughs> God, everything is complicated. So yeah, there you go. We had to get in detail about the devil's drawers. Right. So uh, <laughs> devil's drawers. Ooh, good title. Good title. Devil drawers. Write that one down. We will. I don't uh, even want to know what that story would be about. The, yeah. the devil's drawers. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> somebody would have to be no never mind i'm not gonna go that far i'll just leave that one alone i was gonna say that a folks you stuck around thank you for that we'd love to actually hear your take on this how you feel about it to keep it simple is ai for marketing ethically sound can you do that blah blah, blah, blah. Types, yeah. yeah so drop it in the comments email us whatever you want to do but you know, please let us know I'm going to pop it on our Facebook page, too, as a question, see what kind of feedback we get. And then in an, in an upcoming episode, we'll discuss that further. The other thing I wanted to say is that, again, speaking about AI, it permeates so many different realms of business that we're in now, both creative and industrial. And so it's just interesting to see where it's going. But I would love to, at a later date, have a, a further conversation about this to see time passes what changes in the mind shift occur if any yeah i tell you what if ai is utilized to successfully cure cancer the public relations on ai will go through the roof yep yep but right yep. now it's it's that thing i cannot afford my staff is myself and several animals that hang around my house that's it. And occasionally, Glorious, Glorious will read everything that we put out. Oh, yeah. She's, she's getting editorial. You know, she's first. the first reader. Yeah. And my son will model as various characters <laughs> that wind up on book covers. He's played two different characters from the Soul Scream staff. Yeah. Um, the new one that's coming out, Annihilation, is the second character for him. He has played McTavish. And now he'll play Finbar, uh, nope, not Finbar, Zebot Maruda. Yeah, that's easy uh, to say. <laughs> yeah, Zebot Maruda is going through a hell of a time. That's all. Literally and figuratively, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we will talk about your family and your critters' input into the greatness that is Seamus and Nunzio production, your photos and things up there. Uh, folks, we will um, add a little uh, download. Uh, guide that will be useful to you i think might be useful to a lot of you okay. i won't say what it is because i'm going to go into our vault and see what i can pull from there but that will be there uh when you start to enjoy this episode so please in, in the oh i'm in the comment section please let us know how you feel about this topic what you would do or not do what you think if if there's another way of looking at this another question that we should be asking and then of course i would say what do you normally say when we get to this point in an episode if you like this please hit and subscribe and please tell us in the comments this is the time where you can tell us yes we know how to tell the story Where's the line in marketing the damn story? Yeah. <laughs> so we can get paid for telling that damn story. That's right. It would be good to do that. Yep, absolutely. We'll be back next week, folks. Take care and thanks for everything.